A ban or sale of TikTok would have serious impacts for other social media companies. Joining us now for more is Rocco Strauss, partner, uh, senior analyst at Arete Research. And Rocco, thank you for joining us here today. There are some obvious potential winners from a TikTok ban, but could you go over some of the details, which are a little bit murky, exactly how um, this uh, potential ban would benefit some of the existing competitors? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it really at the end depends on if we actually get a ban or a divestment, right? Mm -hmm. So like a ban obviously would have um, clear um, benefits to all of the larger ad funded internet, internet names. So we're talking Snap, Pins, Meta, and certainly also Google or YouTube. Um, I mean, in, in our view, uh, Meta stands best, um, you know, with Instagram to capture give or take 40% of the time spent in case of a ban. And if that translates into a similar 40% share of the $15 billion, give or take, that um, TikTok is um, expected to deliver this year in advertising revenues, um, you're talking about like $6 billion of, um, of additional revenues. Where it becomes more interesting is with respect to Snap and what they uh, do around Spotlight, so their TikTok peer. Um, if they would capture some like, say, 15 to 20 percent of the time spent with, with which with respect to kind of like the, the age groups um, on both platforms, you know, would make sense. Um, and you capture like a similar share of the of the 15 billion dollars of revenues. You're talking about like some two billion dollars on a revenue run rate base that could move over to Snap. And that would kind of like mean a 50 percent push to top line revenue growth. Um, so there is more material um, in terms of a percentage of, um, of increase. Um, I would also flag um, YouTube and especially YouTube Shorts, where we think that they could capture like a bit more than Snap uh, than mm -hmm. Snapchat would. That's generally based on you know like YouTube Shorts and and TikTok being a similar age group. Um, so TikTok is somewhat five years uh, older on average per user than than Snap is, which means also Google and and YouTube should actually capture a bit more than. Um, than Snap is. And if there's a divestiture, or let's say there's an IPO for TikTok down the line, they're able to shed all their ties with the CCP, the Communist Chinese Party. Um, I, what does that that has some different implications for their competitors, Snap, uh, Instagram, et cetera, than an outright ban? Because suddenly you're talking about the pie is still there. You're not carving up the TikTok users, users and sending them to other platforms. You're just talking about a change in structure of the company. I'm just wondering uh, how that affects your calculations there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think an IPO is somewhat tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, because what you would need is proper management that can maneuver open markets. You would need proper infrastructure that can actually both hold the U.S. Um, or like the the non-Chinese user data, as well as the algorithms that have to be moved. You need proper R&D and you need proper ad operations. Um, so that in an IPO um, in, a, in a very short time frame that they may get for that is somewhat tricky. So I think um, an acquisition or a divestiture um, and, and an acquisition by potentially someone like Amazon or, or Microsoft, right? You may remember back in 2020 uh, when the government tried to engineer a deal between Walmart, Oracle and, and, and Microsoft, um, something like that looks more likely. Um, and if it really ends up, you know, as a part of Amazon or Microsoft, you know, which, you know, both have obviously their cloud offerings to host the data and have tons of R&D teams that they, that they could uh, employ here, then you somewhat get a much stronger TikTok also based on uh, the additional data that you would get, you know, like on the transaction side for Amazon um, or from the wider offerings that, that Microsoft has in their universe um, than TikTok is today. And that certainly would not be um, a positive to any of the um, of the larger ad funded internet names. But what I would also add here, um, mm -hmm. if uh, from an antitrust perspective, a deal like this would be waved through by government, there may also be a short term time frame, um, you know, also for Snap to be acquired, either by, again by Microsoft or Amazon. Um, and for, for for that type of deal, um, you would create a similar strong Snapchat, you know, as TikTok is as of today, based on the same. Um, you know, rationale that we went through for, uh, for for TikTok becoming stronger. Well, that's really interesting. What happens then if some of these companies, let's say a TikTok or even a Snap is folded into one of the tech giants here with their nearly unlimited R&D budgets, um, given contrast that to Facebook Meta, which is really downsizing, Mark Zuckerberg really turning the screws on its organization and cost cutting. How do, the, how do they compete uh, in this world where you potentially have TikTok and or Snap overtaken by one of these uh, competing tech behemoths? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess the main benefit comes from the additional data source, right? I mean, mm. Meta, as well as, as Alphabet with Google and YouTube, they have vast ways of collecting data on platform as well as all, you know, like off platform um, with all the conversion tags that they have around the web. Um, that is something that Snap, TikTok, also Pinterest is not having as of right now. If you have these additional data assets, you immediately um, monetize these platforms significantly better given that you, um, you know, move closer to conversions and have more intent data present. Um, and that brings pricing up, that attracts more advertisers to the platforms. Um, and with that, I think the uh, consideration of, you know, like the cost that you would have against that uh, becomes less meaningful. Quite interesting. Uh, we got to leave it there though. Rocco Strauss, partner, senior analyst at Arete Research. Thank you for the time today.